What's up, YouTube? Back in the garage. Nick just showed up. And what do we have today, Nick? Uh, I got a handbrake. So I got the reverse pull style. I got the IRP. I came with a Willwood Master, which is important for the Siki pass through line kit. So I'm going to run an inline handbrake instead of doing a dual caliper setup just because it's cheaper, it's easier. A lot of people swear by the dual caliper, and then people say inlines are fine. The big thing is, is your left foot braking. Um, and a lot of guys say if you pull your handbrake, then do your foot brake, you're fine. Some people say they fight each other and you won't get a foot brake. What I've researched, the best way to counteract that is to run a proportioning valve off your handbrake and bias most of the pressure to the front wheels. So when you pull your handbrake, you still have plenty of pressure at the front wheels. I'm not doing that because I'm not to that skill level and I don't really care. Uh, the big thing with the Siki brake line kit, so it comes with banjo fittings that bolt directly into the Willwood master cylinders. So yeah, you don't have to worry about fittings. A big thing I've seen with the Z since you have to plumb it into the ABS block is getting the correct fittings. And this, you know, it's literally just a bolting kit. So it has fitting for the ABS block that bolt into, they're basically connect, converts it to AM lines to run to the flexible lines. So this will already tested the fittings on the master cylinder and then the fitting should work on the ABS block. So it's gonna be all bolt in, uh, plug and play basically. More than likely it's gonna end up being about here, somewhere in here. I haven't decided if I wanna tilt it towards me or do a straight pullback. Um, I've never had a handbrake, so I don't have a personal preference yet. <laughs> um, but the way I'm going to make it, it's going to be completely changeable. So I can mount it like this, and if I not don't like it, I mean, I just turn it and draw new holes and remount it like that. But basically, the issue people run in with is this is like your uh, climate control. Um, I still want to keep this like, keep all the luxuries in this car because it's not like any crazy build. There's no reason for me to remove AC and heat. So, I mean, if I removed AC and heat, I could remove my climate control, but to me, it's like, I might as well keep that stuff. But the big thing with the sticky lines is they run banjo, you're, you're gonna run a banjo bolt off that, so it's gonna stick up like a half inch. Gotcha. Where if you ran hard lines, they stick up probably like two inches, an inch and a half, something like that, and it's just way more intrusive. So I could probably just bolt it straight into the trans tunnel, but I'd have to move it all the way up here. And a lot of people, like this, from what I heard, these are pretty strong, but some people say the trans tunnels are weak. And with all the force of pulling, it'll start to bend and you could pull it out. So the plate is basically, it's either going to run straight or I'm going to angle it down. And that's going to allow, it's just going to be a lot stronger basically. And yeah. it's not permanent. Um, a lot of people just weld them to your, they'll weld a plate to the trans tunnel, then they'll weld this to that plate or bolt this to yeah. the plate. And I just, I mean, I just don't really have any desire to sit in here and have Cade like weld up the trans <laughs> tunnel and sparks fiber. It's just not even worth it to me. Um, and it's nice to have it fully reversible. Not that I ever intend on not having a handbrake, but if I want to change a handbrake, I don't have to get in here with an angle grinder and cut a handbrake out. Like that would just be obnoxious. Mm -hmm. So they make they make mounts that bolt directly in. I think GK Tech makes one and Level Ride Concepts or something. I mean, if you guys have a Z, you probably already know if you're looking at handbrakes. Um, but when I was looking it up, it was looking like a two to three week ship time. And I pretty much wanted to get this done this weekend because we have a, we'll have a drift event in like two weeks. And it's on a Saturday. So basically I have to get it done this weekend or next weekend. Because then the following week I'm gonna get off work and then the very next day like I'm going to the drift event. So I just ordered a flat piece of steel. I'm uh, basically just gonna cut it out. Um, this is gonna go in place of the factory ship boot retainer or at least half of it. And basically I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut it shorter and I'm probably gonna cut it at an angle. And then from there I'm gonna decide if I need to cut it and have it re-welded to whatever angle I want it to be at, basically. But I already drilled the hole for the shift boot. Um, pretty straightforward. This all comes out to be cheaper than you buy the actual bracket. I mean, I may be saving like 10 or 20 bucks, but it'd probably be better just to buy the bracket, but I didn't want to wait. And then if you end up having to modify the bracket, it's like, well, what's the point, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, and we got the fab shop here, so we're all yeah. good. So get your angle grinder and get the cutting. We'll uh, That's right. keep you updated as we keep going. Got the hand, got the handle now.
All right, so I got the mount done for the most part, other than painting it. Yeah, these are the- Master cylinder itself. Yeah, the uh, handbrake mount. So I just drilled and tapped those, but pretty much um, it just kind of lays in here, just like the ones you buy pre-made. So it'll just lay over the shift boot, and then I put the rib nuts down there, and then I'll basically bolt into the rib nuts here, and then I'll bolt in here to the factory holes for the shift boot. And then this guy will just lay on top of there, and then yeah. this will bolt into the plate, and it should work pretty well. Nice. Um, it's a little extra work, but That's sick. at the end of the day, it's my yeah, preference. Yeah, it's worth it. So Nick's pre-bleeding, or he pre-bled. Yeah, like bench bled. Yeah, the... But in the car, I guess, instead of on the bench. Yeah, hydro E. So he's got it all in the car. Yeah. Loosely, just so he could bench bleed it. Yeah, let me... And what's next? I don't know if they're going to be able to see anything if it's not too dark, but... So I have, like, temporary mounted. Um, so the line just kind of... Boom, right there. So the Bandru lines that come with the Siggy lines, which are nice, because it, it should fit right under the climate control stuff. They're pretty much just coming out of this. Right here, there's a metal rod for the dash that is very sharp and i don't want them to chafe so i'm probably going to end up running them they're going to be exposed but i'll zip time out of the way there is a grommet above the accelerator pedal that the wire harness goes through so i just poked the hole in that ran the rock lines through it and that comes out i'll show you up here so that comes out right there one of the lines will run into the master cylinder and then the other one runs into the abs block and i have to switch two lines here so basically it doesn't it doesn't disable the abs but you you can't use the abs in this configuration i already have the abs disabled through the fuse um apparently if you try to do this without disabling the abs like it's really bad like your brakes don't work or something i don't know my abs is already disabled this car's never gonna have <laughs> abs again but blind. Full blind. all right what's up guys we are continuing hydro install uh, it's not finalized yet. I still have to like zip tie the lines, make them look half decent, but it's kind of a rat's nest because they gave me pretty much like an extra foot of line I don't really need. And there's really nowhere to put it under the dash unless I get crazy and take everything apart and just kind of route it through stuff. I'm not doing all that. Tiki has directions. You can look it up on YouTube or for old forum stuff. Um, but basically, so I ran the brake master cylinder straight into the hydro as like the inlet. So since it doesn't have its own reservoir, since it's, I'm running it in line with the system. And then the hydro outlet is running into the ABS, which would be where the master cylinder would have ran, but now it's running there. And I had to switch the, uh, the front brake line over one. And then I had to switch two of the ABS lines you switch. So that way, when you run the inline setup, it actually goes to the rear. Because the ABS setup, I guess in case the brake line fails, the block basically, it's like, they're like interchange, they're crisscross basically. Okay. If that makes sense. So that way if a line fails, you still have front brakes. I don't know the specifics of it, <laughs> but they pretty much like interchange with each other. But now it's pretty much front brakes go to the front, back goes to the back. Um, they obviously all still work normally when I pull the hydro, all the pressure goes to the rear wheels. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's nice. That's right. Nice. And I'll zip tie it and it'll look like 1% better, but it's still going to look 1% better. All right, guys, it's another day. Um, we ended off last night because we just ran out of time. We were tired, you know. But we <laughs> finished it up today. So basically, I just put the center console in. And I just cut out around the handbrake and whatnot. The hole's a little big because it's kind of hard to measure it. when it's Because you can't even put this on without the, the hole being there. You can't put it on at all. But, I mean, it's not horrible. Um, it works. There's really not that much throwback. Um, I was worried because it's the smaller master. I guess there's a 0. 0.6 and then the 0. 0.75. So some people say the three quarter. There's, you know, just, you know, it's a bigger, so it's a little stiffer, but this seems okay. So next weekend, ripping the, the handbrake. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll be nice. Just, you know, more, just more to learn, really. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this helped a little bit. Um, yeah. I don't think we've seen anybody do it quite this way. So um, hopefully gave somebody an idea or help somebody a little bit. So anyways, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a good night.